God's representation, which means speaking and acting on his behalf, in this day of the Lord is his righteous servant of Isaiah 53. God's visible representation in the day of the Lord of Malachi 3 is God's righteous servant, who is the prophet like Moses, to deliver the new covenant of Jeremiah 31, which is basically how we know um, that the time to come of Jeremiah 31 is the day of the Lord, because the only other place you see a mention of the arrival of the new covenant is with the angel of the covenant that you desire. The only other covenant is that of friendship when Moshe comes. God grants the covenant of friendship. The prophet like Moses to deliver the new covenant to the Jewish people as Moses delivered the first. It's important to point out that uh, it's not new. He, God says, not like the covenant I made with the fathers out of Egypt. That's true. It's an amendment. It's a, uh, there's an addition to it and a confirmation of the first covenant. Good. Nothing ever happened to the first covenant. It's not terminated by the new covenant by any stretch. But there's an amendment and you find it in America. Verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 22, be mindful of the laws I gave Moses at Oreb of my rules, commandments. <clears throat> um, it's being mindful because it was strict compliance at Oreb, Sinai, and it had to be 100% of the people. Well, God makes it clear. He realizes that's no longer the case. He understands that that's why there's a scroll of remembrance for those who revere and esteem his name and those who do not. He's recognizing that fact, even though when he um, speaks of the new covenant in Jeremiah 31, he says, and all will heed me, and poor will be written on your heart. How's he going to do this? He tells you, because I'm going to... Forgive your sins and remember your iniquities no more. Okay, he's making a new covenant. He's delivering. He's saying this is what it's going to be. But he knows as well as we know. Just because you forgive somebody a sin isn't going to, isn't going to necessarily get them back to synagogue, spreading Torah day and night, and... Um, becoming one who doesn't have to other, ask other people's questions, but it will for a great majority of people. And he knew that. And he makes it clear in Malachi 3, which is the last page of the last of the prophets. He shot talking to his prophets, the Hebrew Bible uh, closes up. So, that, that's what that all means. As far as everybody has to, it becomes, be mindful. Now, each uh, uh, sect, I guess it is, of Judaism, Orthodox, Orthodox, Conservative, uh, Reform or Reconstructionist, uh, they're all going to have to decide what that means for them. Every, as you can imagine, everybody's going to come up with something different. What being mindful is, but as Elijah, and I am the righteous servant. And I'll get to this, I actually handled the, the task of Elijah, David, and the prophet like Moses. Uh, I've already pretty much handled the prophet like Moses. I've, I've, I've written two books as Moses wrote the Torah. God told me what to write down, commanded and directed. It's not straight dictation. I get real involved in it. He, he makes me feel like a writer. But, uh, but every word is it. It's, it's, uh, it's divinely received. So it's scripture, it's, it's not canonized, but it is new, and it straightens out a lot of things that Judaism has done wrong. They just flat got it wrong, and, and he knew they would. There's a lot of cranky writing in there. 53 is a great example. The reason I'm cursed with disease, 
that I will offer myself for guilt and receive long life. The person with disease has got one purpose. He knew the Gentiles were going to come up with an unblemished lamb of God. And then they did it just for sins of you. It's a story, but he knew they turned to it and they would ignore those words. They would ignore they they, they interpreted it to be he was he, he was brought to sickness was brought into grief. But the problem with that is, in verse 12, he's exposed to death. So whatever the sickness is, whatever the sickness is, he exposes him to death and takes him to grief. In my case, that was cancer. So they can tiptoe around it all they want. But, uh, but I had to go through the cancer just because of that, because it, Ezekiel is your go-by for safety three. The spirit seized me, and I went in the bitterness and fury of my spirit, he says, in the hand of God. Now, I'm going to get to that. That's, uh, <laughs> that's not getting you going to, that's going to God's boot camp. And uh, he doesn't have any, he doesn't bother him one back uh, to wound you, to hurt you mightily. To, to basically, when I say to you, I, I call it torment. Sometimes it can be so bad, but it has changed me. Now, it took 13 years, but I'm not the same person he started with by any stretch of the imagination. It takes the fury from you. You know, Moses was like that. Uh, he got so uh, furious, he killed me. Ezekiel was like that. I was like that. And that's, we call it his fire refinement. And, uh, I'll have a lot more on that as I go. Okay, the distinction of the righteous servant begins in three verses combined by quotes, which I don't see that anybody else has in the uh, renditions of their translation from Hebrew uh, to English. Uh, Shabbat, uh, Soviet singer, uh, Jews to Judaism. I, I just don't, I don't see it. And it makes a difference. Three verses combined by quotes at the end of chapter 52, which of course leads into 53, where God is the speaker. And then it becomes the witnesses in verse 1 of chapter 53, speaking in the first six verses, also combined in quotes. Okay, that's important because as in 53 is a story, the righteous servant is as lowly as these people are. For the most part, that's what, that's what you gather. He was born from arid land, this and that, but rises to a great tree crown, okay? He starts to lower, okay? Then he goes back and helps them because they're in the same place. What is it? They're unrighteous. They're sick. They're not observant Jews. They feel badly before God. They, they don't live their lives correctly. They've got all kinds of problems in the family. They've got uh, problems at work. All kinds of things simply because they don't obey God's laws that he says you really need to get through this harsh world. And, you know, he says it's nothing to me whether you, whether you abide by them or not. It's for you. You know, if you don't want to be a servant, I'm not going to pay any attention to you. That's just the way he is. Okay, here's the witnesses. This is the witness is, and they are the many made righteous. Remember, this man, he goes through all these things. He is, we're going to tell you, he, he was wounded. He, he was, uh, uh, he, uh, well, let me read it. Let me read what they have. But he ends up making the many righteous, and that would include all these people, all these people who are sick from unrighteousness. And uh, and then a multitude of people. Such as flow. The second test. Okay, the witnesses who are Jews identify themselves as ones of the many made righteous by God's righteous servant, saying, It was our sickness that he was bearing, our suffering he endured. That's verse four. 
He was wounded because of our sins, crushed because of our iniquities. Verse 5. He bore the chastisement that made us whole, and by his bruises we were healed. Verse 5. And the Lord visited upon him the guilt of us all. Verse 6. And see, offering for guilt. Verse 10. That's what the offering for guilt is all about. Actually, that's, that's, what, that's what you tell God. I'll, I'll go remove their guilt by being the chief of righteous that makes them any righteous. I'll make them righteous, their guilt is gone. And then what about all these words? Bring chastise, sickness he took, this and that. That's God's boot camp. <laughs> that's where he... He, uh, yeah, sleep deprivation, mouth sleep. I mean, and the stories are endless over 13 years because he's relentless. And he does not sleep, which means I don't sleep much. And, uh, you know, most of the time I can't understand why he's still doing it. I feel like I'm prepared and I'm ready. Uh, the last two years have been the most terrible, brutal uh, of the 13. Every year it just escalated more and more. And his response to that is, it takes more to get out of you what I want. These emotions, all these different emotions, 